deep within the emerald jungles of Central America, beneath centuries of vines, roots, and silence, a forgotten tomb was disturbed. What they found inside would send shockwaves through the world of archaeology. It wasn't just gold or ceremonial jade. It was something far more powerful, something hidden in the very cells of a corpse, untouched for over a thousand years. Ancient DNA, perfectly preserved, frozen in time. This was no ordinary burial. The skeleton wore a crown of jade, its teeth inlaid with obsidian. Glyphs etched into stone whispered of a divine lineage, gods walking among men, and bloodlines chosen by the heavens. But where did these kings really come from? And were they truly descendants of gods, or of something else entirely? For centuries, the Maya civilization has been a puzzle. Their pyramids rival Egypt. Their astronomy predicted eclipses with eerie precision, and their blood rituals were said to pierce the veil between worlds. But the question no one could answer, until now, was this. Who were the Mayan kings, really? And when scientists finally cracked open their genetic code, the truth they uncovered changed everything we thought we knew about the ancient world. Between 250 and 900 AD, the Maya dominated Mesoamerica. Over 40 powerful city-states, from Tikal to Palenque, rose like stone titans from the jungle floor. They built towering pyramids aligned with the stars, carved intricate hieroglyphs recording their king's deeds, and created a calendar that outlived their empire. Their cities were home to tens of thousands. Their influence stretched across modern-day Mexico, Guatemala, Belize, and Honduras. But within this magnificent civilization, one class stood above all, the Aja, the Divine Kings. Draped in jaguar pelts and crowned in greenstone, these rulers claimed descent from gods and celestial beings. Their names were inscribed in codices and stelae worshipped like deities, feared like warlords. Yet despite all the glory left in stone, their true origin remained a mystery. Were these kings truly of local bloodlines? Or did their power come from an ancient migration, a lost civilization, or even something more mysterious? Legends spoke of a foreign elite arriving from across the sea. Myths hinted at sky-born ancestors with glowing skin and eyes of fire. Most dismissed these tales as metaphors, until DNA evidence began telling a different story. And when the bones of a high-ranking ruler were unearthed in the temple city of Copan, scientists realized they might finally hold the key to one of history's oldest royal mysteries. In 2022, a team of archaeologists digging beneath the ruins of Copan, one of the most sacred Maya cities, unearthed a hidden crypt sealed for over a millennium. The chamber was buried beneath the main Acropolis, deliberately concealed with layers of limestone and obsidian. What lay inside was beyond expectations. The skeletal remains of a male adult, approximately 40 years old at death, Surrounded by elite grave goods, ceremonial blades, carved jade amulets, and shells from distant shores. But one object stood out. A carved stone plaque placed over the chest, bearing glyphs that translated to, He who spoke to the sky. The figure was no mere noble. This was royalty. A king. Perhaps one of the founding rulers of Copan. The team called him Kawil Ajo, after the storm god whose name was often invoked by kings seeking divine legitimacy. His teeth were filed to sharp points, inlaid with turquoise and hematite. His femurs showed signs of childhood malnutrition, suggesting a dramatic rise in status later in life. And most crucially, his bones were untouched by looters. That meant one thing. His DNA was likely intact. 
The researchers knew they were standing on the brink of something extraordinary, but they had no idea that the genetic material within those ancient bones would not only confirm royal identity, it would unravel a secret that had been buried for over a thousand years. The bones were transported under tight security to a high-containment clean lab in Mexico City, one of the few facilities equipped to handle ancient DNA with such delicate preservation. The team, led by Dr. Isabel Romero, a renowned bioarchaeologist specializing in pre-Columbian genetics, began the painstaking process of extraction. Each fragment of bone was shaved, sterilized, and processed under UV light to eliminate modern contamination. One false move, and centuries of secrets would turn to dust. For weeks, progress stalled. Tropical humidity had left the samples fragile. Mitochondrial DNA yielded partial sequences, but nothing definitive. Time was running out, funding was limited, and the scientific community was skeptical. After all, Mayan remains had rarely produced viable genetic results. But then, a breakthrough. Using a revolutionary technique called ultra-short read DNA capture, the team isolated nuclear DNA from deep within the petrous bone, the densest part of the skull. What emerged was stunning, an intact Y chromosome, a full mitochondrial profile, and markers unlike any previously cataloged in ancient Mesoamerica. The results weren't just anomalous, they were impossible. Romero cross-referenced the genetic data with thousands of pre-Columbian genomes. The markers didn't match the Maya, the Olmec, the Zapotec, or any known lineage from the region. Instead, they pointed to something entirely unexpected, a link to a distant population thousands of miles away, across oceans and across time. Now, the question was no longer who this king was, but how he came to be buried at the heart of a Mayan temple, ruling over a civilization that believed he was divine. The genetic sequencing was complete. The data had been verified, replicated, and peer-reviewed. And the conclusion was staggering. The Y-DNA haplogroup of the Copan ruler was not native to Mesoamerica. It belonged to haplogroup R1b, a lineage dominant in Western Europe, particularly among populations in ancient Iberia and the British Isles. This meant one thing, the man buried as a Mayan god-king had European ancestry, over a thousand years before Columbus. Radiocarbon dating confirmed the skeleton was no later than 750 AD. This wasn't a post-contact anomaly. It was pre-Columbian, and it rewrote everything. Doctor. Romero and her team theorized that this genetic signature could only have arrived through transoceanic contact, long before the Spanish conquest. The possibility sent shockwaves through academic circles. Were there forgotten migrations across the Atlantic? Lost ships? Or even ancient civilizations capable of sea travel at global scale? But the DNA told an even deeper story. The mitochondrial DNA inherited through the mother, belonged to a rare subclade found today only in isolated pockets of North Africa. This ruler was a genetic mosaic, part Iberian, part Berber, living and dying in the heart of a civilization that believed he was descended from the gods. How had he come to power? Was he the last survivor of a shipwrecked expedition? A child adopted and deified by the Maya? or part of a royal bloodline, deliberately bred to preserve a forgotten legacy. One thing was certain. He did not belong to the world historians thought they understood. Picture the scene. The year is approximately 650 AD. A massive storm rages over the Caribbean. Lightning fractures the sky as a foreign vessel. Wooden, long, with curved sails, struggles against the fury of the ocean. It's not a Mayan canoe. It's something older, rougher, 
built for longer journeys. The ship, likely damaged and blown off course, carries a small crew, merchants, explorers, refugees. They are not from the Americas. Their skin is pale, their language unknown, their tools unfamiliar. Somewhere off the coast of modern-day Belize, the ship breaks apart. Survivors wash ashore, confused and wounded, but they are not alone. Mayan coastal scouts find them, and instead of war, curiosity prevails. These strangers are brought inland, through thick jungle, past stone pyramids, into the heart of Copan. Over time, one among them rises. He learns the language, shares knowledge of stars, metals, and warfare. Perhaps he bears strange markings or claims ancestry from celestial lands. The Maya, already steeped in myth and prophecy, see in him something divine, a sign, a living God. He is crowned king, not as a conqueror, but as a revelation. His children are born into royalty, their blood forever marked by the mystery of their origin. Glyphs are carved to honor his coming. A dynasty is formed, built on myth and memory. And when he dies, he is buried beneath the temple, guarded by obsidian and silence. For centuries, his true story is lost to time, until science cracks open his tomb, and with it, a forgotten chapter of human history. The discovery of European and North African DNA within the tomb of a Mayan king doesn't just rewrite a chapter. It challenges the very foundation of how we understand ancient human movement. For centuries, history painted rigid borders around civilizations, oceans as barriers, and timelines as absolutes. But this DNA tells another story, one of forgotten journeys, of contact between worlds long before recorded conquest, and of rulers whose bloodlines defied geography. Was the king of Copan a remnant of an ancient transatlantic voyage? A survivor of a culture lost to history? Or the product of a global exchange that our textbooks still refuse to acknowledge. The evidence lies not just in stone, but in the strands of life itself, waiting to be decoded. And if this king existed, how many others did too? What other secrets lie buried beneath jungle soil, locked in bone, waiting for science to speak for the dead? This is only the beginning. If you found this story as mind-blowing as we did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and explore our other deep dive mysteries. Every week, we bring the forgotten past back to life, one discovery at a time, because the truth is always stranger than we imagined.